difference between you and a struggling writer, right? You're a starving artist, right? Like someone yeah. who wants to be a writer, has a book. Uh, what was the difference, what's the difference between you and them? Like you have uh, to go back from like where you got started with all this yeah. story today. With no, like, no, it's There's so many people who want to write books. What, 100,000 books a year? Or uh, way more than that. It's like a half, I think a half million. Yeah, and then like how that. many people can make careers out of it? Yeah, very few. I don't know, maybe... The, 10%, 5%? Jeff Goins has a book coming out called Real Artists Don't Starve. That's pretty good. And I like that. He was basically saying the whole, like the starving artist thing is like a myth. Basically, it's to, I think it's mostly unnecessary. Like most of the reason I think artists are not successful is not because they made something so brilliant and people don't appreciate it. It's that they, they make things first rather than thinking about um, who they're making it for. There's this line I like, from Toby Litt, he's like a literary critic, and he's saying um, every bad poem, no, every bad piece of work is a love poem addressed to oneself, or something like that. And like <laughs> most, the mo most of the reason that people's work doesn't sell is not because someone, especially in a world of self-publishing on the internet, is not because they're not able to get access to an audience. Like it used to be true, there was there were people who made brilliant things that gatekeepers, whether they're editors or publishers or, um, you know, critics or whatever, they go like, sorry, we're, you don't, you don't get to make that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't get to do that. We're not going to show your painting. We're not going to publish your book, whatever. Well, that's not true anymore for the most part. So I, I would say the, and this is probably kind I would say the vast majority of the, re, the vast majority of the time, the reason art sells fails to sell is because it's not sellable. It's not made for people. And so I think one of the things that I'm pretty good at is like, I think, I think what do I wanna make and what do people want slash need and where do those two things overlap? Mm. I don't make whatever I want in a cave and then go, how do I trick people into getting this? Or, you know, how can I... How it's not can a trick, so but now you have to go try to find people to convince they might want it? Yeah, yeah. Or how do, how do I get some important person to say that other people should want this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I want to make something that... I, to me, ideally, you want to bake all the marketing and the audience into the thing. So I think that's one difference. But, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's a weird... I, actually, I, it's something I've thought about with my parents, where it's like, okay, if... If I was the same person, but my art was like horribly misunderstood or terribly unsuccessful, would we like have the same relationship? Because like, I think one of the weird halo effects of your stuff selling is that p people like it more. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like okay, if The Obstacle is Away has sold very well. What, what's very well, by the way? Um, what's like a range? Uh, it's at like 400,000 copies, I think. Sold? Yeah. That's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, in like 20 languages. It's, it's done very well. Um, like much, much better than I thought it would have done. Um, and it, it's continuing to sell. So that's, that's actually the real encouraging thing is that a book is like not just sold once, but keep continuing to sell. Um, but uh, if the book had sold zero copies, it's the same book. Oh, that's really interesting. Go on. So uh, I tell the story in Ego's the Enemy about John Kennedy, John Kennedy Tool. Have you read A Confederacy of Dunces? It's probably the funniest book ever written. It's amazing. Um, it's like, uh, it's just an amazing book. But anyway, so he writes the book. Um, he submits it to uh, Simon & Schuster. Simon & Schuster doesn't publish it. He commits suicide. He's so humiliated and uh, discouraged by the rejection. He commits suicide. Um, his mother finds the book a few years later in a drawer in his desk, takes it to a college professor who's also an amazing writer. Um, he gets it published and it wins the Pulitzer Prize that year. So it's the same fucking book. He's like he did not edit it in between like death de de after death. He did not come. His ghost, his ghost did not come back it and like fix the manuscript. Ghost writer. Yes, okay, exactly. You had to do it. Yes, that, exactly. I can, I can help. It. Um, it's the same fucking book, and now it's widely considered to be this, you know, one of the greatest books ever written in the 20th century. Yeah. You know, um, so you have to. You have to, at some level, it go, there actually is no difference between starving artist and successful artist. What matters is, is the work any better or worse? So the work is almost, well, the work is, you're saying similar, but it's like, are they putting in the marketing and the promotion and like what, yeah. like what someone who would actually would buy wants, not just what they selfishly want? Yeah, like I hear from lots of authors and other, and people, they do this with startups too. I'm sure you hear from them where they're like, I've made this idea. And you're like, the idea is pretty good. And they're like, it launches tomorrow. 
uh, what should I do? And it's like, how do you not know if it launches tomorrow? You know, like, or like they'll go like, I wrote this book about this like super obscure topic, um, all these things. And, and then they're like, how can I sell? It's like, you have no fans. Like you haven't done the work. Like if you were to launch a book tomorrow, even if it's your first book, and even if it wasn't a good book, a certain number of people would buy it because yeah. you have an email list of people. You did the work. And um, most people don't do that. They just want to make their... They just want to do the fun work, which is like making the Ooh, thing. That's a really good point. They don't want to do the unfun work, which is like the hustling part. Hi, y'all. I'm Noah's mom. If you like what you're seeing, please give this video a share and leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll spank you. By the way, check out my playlist with Ryan Holiday for more goodies. Adios.